How's it going, fam? Anthony Johnson here today from 21 Studios here at CPAC 2021. I'm with uh, anti-communist documentary filmmaker and author Trevor Loudon. Trevor, how are you doing today? Doing great, Anthony. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Yeah, we got to meet a few weeks ago at a local Republican event, and I really liked your talk. Really appreciated it. You're savage. I was impressed, to be frank. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not here to muck around, mate. I'm here, I'm here to lay it out. I don't come all this way to pussyfoot around. Yeah. So for the fans of my channel who don't know you, can you tell them kind of what you're famous for and what you're known for with documentaries and everything happened with cancel yeah. culture? Yeah. Look, I've done several documentaries. I've written several books. I've probably spoken to 500 audiences around the country. And what, what my message is this, is that America is the number one stumbling block to world socialism, world revolution. And the world revolutionary movement, which is now driven by the Chinese, is very, very close to achieving their aims. And they have done that by infiltrating US politics. They really control um, the White House now. They have done it by infiltrating the education system. And a very big part of that has been to destroy the American family and destroying the American father. You know, even things like the Boy Scouts, you know. Everything that upholds masculine values, the American family, patriotism, courage has all come under massive attack by the left. And we've got to understand this is not this is not just because people have a chip on their shoulder. This is an organized revolutionary program. Karl Marx said the big enemy to the to the communist state is family. If you can destroy family, you can communize everything. And so that's why the American male uh, boys and men are under attack by the courts, by our culture, in the military, you name it, everywhere you look, men are under attack. And we've got to understand that in the, in the context that this is a revolutionary program to bring this country to its knees. Yeah, so with a very long-term dark goal. What is that goal? Can you describe it to me a little more? Is it global governance, one world government, worldwide yeah. communism? What is it? Well, it's worldwide, worldwide communism, you know, and some people might characterize it as a sort of elitist globalist movement. It is a world where very few run everything, where the average person is just a cog in the machine, has no dignity, no freedom, no prosperity. It's like if you, you want to, you know, compare it like a, a farmer running a, 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 a chicken farm where every chicken's in a cage, where it gets fed a little bit, it gets fat, it gets eaten. That's the ideal world for the communists. You work, you, you provide for the state, and when you're no longer useful, you just get turned into Soylent Green or whatever you get fleece. turned into. You, you, you're fleeced. You are, you are a utility. You are a, a, a tool to be used. That is the ideal communist world. You know, we believe in a world where the individual is, is sacred. We believe in liberty, personal responsibility, that the family is the bedrock of our society and that every family needs a strong father and a strong mother and them and that pair, that team working together produces fantastic kids. Yeah. That's our world. Those are and facts that's, too, that's, right? that's, that's worked pretty well for a long time, right? Yeah. Did it not build America? Yeah. You know, did... did um, did the American revolutionaries have to stop for um, you know, to find secure zones on their way to, to fight the British? Did the American soldiers who fought the revolution, were they unsure about their masculinity? Yeah. Were they, did they dress up in women's clothing, clothing when they went to fight the British? They were men, they were backed up by their women, they wanted to fight for a free country for their children. That's what created this country. So in your view, the founding fathers and the founding generation were a great example of masculinity. Is that correct? Look, absolutely. You know, for, for thousands of years, we've glorified the masculine virtues. You know, courage, bravery, resilience, um, you know, generosity, the, the ideal of the strong father who would protect his families, teach his boys to be a man, teach his daughters to be a lady, yeah. to be ladies. That was the ideal for thousands of thousands of years. It's only in the last 50 years when the radical left have got a very strong foothold in the judicial system and the education system that we've even begun to question those values. Like if I told, 
If I had told the, soul, the young men who stormed the beaches at Normandy that in 60 or 80 years their grandsons would, w wouldn't be sure if they were men or women, that they'd be ashamed of their masculinity, that, that being a man was somehow toxic, they, they would not have believed you. They couldn't have begun to believe you. And so that has shown how much the radical left, how much damage they've done to the American family and the American male and, and American womanhood too, by the way. We've all suffered from this. None, nobody's gained but the revolutionaries. But we need to understand this is not an accident. This is not a conspiracy. This is just a program by the left to transform society to recreate it in their image, and they know the main impediment to that is a strong American family. So that's what they do. And so to clarify for audience, your view is that the war on men, family, and masculinity is rooted in communism and Marxism. Look, absolutely. You know, who started the, the, the radical feminist movement? Now, I'm not against women voting. I'm, I, I want my daughter to have every opportunity that's open to her. But the feminist movement was never about that. It was about dividing men from women, about breaking down families, making women ashamed to look after their families and, and, and cook a meal for their husband, yeah. you know? So it's the, all about the, smash the patriarchy and smash, smash the father. Smash the patriarchy. The patriarchy is a good thing. I'm not saying that men should be tyrants, but a, everybody knows that a, a family is best when you've got a strong man yeah. who can protect his family, protect his wife, his wife looks up to, and has a wife that he respects and is very strong in herself. That's the ideal. But they have worked to weaken the man so women don't respect men, and then they don't respect themselves. The kids grow up without, without role models. They don't know, young men get into gangs in prison because they don't know what being a man is. They think being a man is being a gangbanger. Well, they're, yeah, they're screamed at too, that they're toxic and they're villains and they're, they're demons. This is how boys are taught today, yeah. right? And all they can do is go away and hide in their basement and play, and play adventure games on the computer because at least then you go out and do some stuff. Yeah. You do some stuff that men should be doing, you know? Now, and, you're, and mentioning, the, you're mentioning values and ideals here for masculinity and femininity and family, but it also feels to me, growing up uh, as a young American man, I'm 32 now, there's almost been like this massive rejection of common sense masculinity, common yeah. sense family values. So is it also a rejection of common sense, not just ideals? Yeah, well look, look, common sense, it means <clears throat> when you can look at reality and make accurate decisions, where you've got a common sense, where, where we have a, a common agreement on what real things are and what real values are and what achieves good results. <clears throat> it's common sense that kids do better <clears throat> it's common sense that kids do better in an intact family. It's common sense that honesty is the best policy. It's common sense that you pr should protect your family, that you should work, that you should teach your kids work ethic and honesty and moral values. That's all common sense yeah. because it's common people have accepted those values for a very, very long time. So if you want to transform society, you have to take what is common sense and turn it into toxic. You have to make it somehow bad. You know, look, right now, you know, if you believe in the flag, if you believe in borders, if you believe in law and order, you're a racist. Yeah. How insane is that? All of those things benefit everybody. But the war on men and patriotism and all of the values that go with that have so intensified that what once would have seen completely common sense. Yeah, it's common sense we have a border. It's common sense that families should stay together. It's common sense that we have two genders, right? That, that two genders, you know, that's all common sense. 30 years ago, if I told you that we're gonna be questioning things like there are two genders, that that would be a serious legal question and a serious philosophical question, you'd have thought I was a nutcase. Yeah because that was common sense and it's not common sense now because you've got so many people driving an agenda to make that seem weird you know the lunatics are running society now they are agenda driven they are bitter and twisted see this this is i, I this is an interesting thing 
Some of you may have heard of Tammy Bruce. She was a, she's a lesbian woman out in Los Angeles who was a radical feminist. Now she's a conservative, right? And I asked Tammy, when you're with the left, the radical feminists and whatever, what made them like they are? And she said, every one of them was a damaged person. They'd come from a split up family, they'd been bullied, they were, they were, they were misfits in some way or another. Now we all have our own personality problems, right? We all, none of us are perfect. Trauma and things. Trauma, we all have difficulties. But we accept personal responsibility. We sort ourselves out and make ourselves better people. The left sees it differently. They want to make us like them. They are misfits, so we all have to become misfits. We, we believe in personal responsibility. We have faults, we sort them out. We have difficulties with our spouse. We sort them out like adults. We come to a resolution. The left believes in splitting, dividing, and forcing people to adopt their values. Their wacko, crazy, insane, sick values. You look around society now, you look at the left, we have been forced into sickness like we've never seen before, and that's hurting our kids. And if we won't stand up to protect our kids, we don't deserve to be parents. Well put, well put. One of my final questions, you're actually from New Zealand, not from I America. I am, I am. So I want to ask you, how does the state of masculinity outside of America, but in Western nations, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, what have you seen and is it similar to America, further ahead, a little bit behind, how is it over there? I would say it's a little bit ahead in my country. Um, like I'm talking 15 years ago when my boy was about four or five, I went to pick him up from his uh, preschool one day and the teachers upright told me off because he had picked up a, a broom and was pretending it was a gun and was you know, pretending to shoot his, his friends. And I said, what's the problem? And I, they said, well, you can't have violence. You know? And I said, well, look, um, what do you do? How do you handle that? And they said, well, we, we get him to pretend the gun is something else. And I said, well, you mean like a bazooka or something? And, they, ah. and I said, well, I'm going to walk out of this room with my boy. We're going to machine gun each other all the way across the car park to the car. I want my boy to be a man. I want him to learn to be a fighter, to, to stand up and protect himself, protect his family, protect his country. That's what I want. I admire that in a man. So look, every Western country is suffering from this. This is not just America. In fact, it's probably not, in, uh, not as bad in America as it is in many other countries. Wow. You know, well, you look, at, you look at the European countries, they are letting, you know, um, you know, radical migrants from other countries rape their women, abuse their children, and they're doing nothing to stop it. The police won't even do anything to stop it because they're so cowed down by political correctness. Well, America hasn't got that bad yet, but that's where it's hidden. Yeah, not if not over my dead body. Well, yeah. good for you. Fuck well, that's yeah. a pretty masculine thing to say. Thank you. So, and that's not toxic. That's great. I admire that. So, I see toxic masculinity. Uh, yeah, uh, look, look, look. Uh, I was born a man, yeah. and I'm proud to be a man, and I'm proud that my wife is a woman. And she's a great lady. You're a real radical. I'm, this is wacko stuff, right? You know? Yep. And, and I, I'm proud to be a father to my kids. I'm not a perfect father. You know, I know I can see the mistakes I've made. But I love my kids. And I want to teach them the values that I was brought up with. Because they were successful for me. And we see them all around us. We see what made America great. America was made great because you had brave men and women who came all the way over the ocean to, for religious liberty to make a new life and a new land where they could live and breathe free. You got the best men and women of Europe to settle this country and they built the most fantastic country the world has ever seen that has done more to protect other countries, to spread freedom, to protect people from tyrants than any other country. And now we're seeing the radical left come and destroy all of it if yeah. they can. We cannot allow that to happen. Our history, our present, our future, all of it, yeah? All of it, you know. They're erasing our past because if you don't know your past, you don't know your virtues. Yeah. You don't know what's right and what's wrong. We got kids now 
who had come out of school thinking America is toxic, America is evil, America was nothing but slavery, America was rich white men who got rich ripping off the everybody else. They don't see that America was the first country in the world that made a country that based on individual liberty, that had created more prosperity than any other country, that that it lifted that the world out of poverty, right? Lifted the world out of poverty. That stopped the communists. That stopped the Nazis. That stopped that 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 built churches. That built schools. That built missions. That built clinics in countries all over the world. This great benefit to the world, and this is all at risk of being lost because we are being cowed down by radical leftist nutcases who try and force their views down our throat and got, have us doubting our own common sense. So my last question is circling, circle back, right? Circle back, girl. Uh, let's circle back to feminism a little bit. Can you talk to me about the more direct connection between feminism and communism and how dangerous is feminism for women today? Like obviously yeah. they've had the right to vote in our country for a long time. Yeah. They seem to be, you know, a lot of it then is aggressive though against men and fathers. So what's the danger to women and what's the connection between communism and feminism? Look, the, most of the leading feminists of the early 20th century were actually Communist Party members. Okay. You look at Gloria Steinem, she's a member of Democratic Socialists of America. She's a Marxist. You look at a lot of the other famous right feminist writers and what they were all either Marxist or Communist Party members. You look at the founder of the gay rights movement, Harry Hay, he was a Communist Party member. I mean, okay. Look at Black Lives Matter today too, right? Black Lives Matter is a pro-Chinese communist operation. It's run out of the Chinese consulate in San Francisco. And, and they have on their own website that they want to destroy the nuclear family. So they are revolutionaries. So. The, the modern feminist movement, and you've got to distinguish between, you know, I want every female to, to, to I want every woman to live to her potential. And to be treated fairly before to the be law. To be treated fairly before the law. All of that I support. But I don't support the, the feminist movement, which is essentially anti-male, it's pro-communist, and it wants anti-father, and wants to destroy the family. Because one of the number one planks in the Communist Manifesto was the abolition of the family. Yeah. And so you got to view feminism, the LGBTQ movement, and the anti-male movement as all aspects of the communist movement. Yeah. They are part and parcel of the communist movement. But we are so gulled by the media in this country, we wouldn't recognize communists if they had a hammer and sickle tattooed on their forehead. You know, oh, they're, they're just progressives. They're just, they're just a little bit, bit liberal. No, they are communist revolutionaries. Black Lives Matter is not a movement about the rights of black people. It's a movement about using and exploiting racial differences in, in this country to destroy this country. But it was founded by 100% feminists. People seem oh, to ignore three, this. Le three lesbian feminists. Yeah. Patrice Kalurs, uh, Opal Tometi, Alicia Gaza, all lesbians, all radical communists, all communists. They have ties to China. They have ties to former East German communists, Vietnamese communists, and Venezuelan communists. And you have people taking the knee to these people, yeah. you know, respecting these people. These people are revolutionaries. There's a great um, man, uh, David Horowitz, who was a communist who became a conservative. And he would always say, when you look at these movements, the LGBTQ movement, the environmental movement, the uh, anti-family movement, they don't believe in their own movements. He said, the, the, the issue is never the issue. The issue is always the revolution. They don't, the feminists don't believe in the feminist movement. Black Lives Matter doesn't believe in the black movement. So feminists just don't using, even care about women, basically. No, they don't. They care about the revolution. Yeah. They're just using women as cannon fodder. Like a smokescreen. A smokescreen. Get the woman to hate the men, get the woman to break up the family, and uh, they'll achieve our revolutionary purpose. And we'll tell them, if they, if they stay home and look after the kids, and cook meals to the, for their family, they're slaves. They're slaves to the patriarchy. They might be perfectly happy, they might love their husband, they might love their kids and feel very fulfilled, but they tell them they're slaves to the patriarchy. So let's have a divorce, 
um, get the father out of things, spend the rest of your life in misery, but you're okay because now you're a feminist. Drowning yeah, in cat hair and cheap wine, yeah? <laughs> Drowning in cat hair and cheap wine. It's a, it's a very good way of putting it. Look, there's a lot of women in this country who invested in the feminist movement of the 1960s that never got married, and now they're looking at their friends who have husbands and children and grandchildren, and they are very, very bitter, lonely women. So my last question then, well put by the way, hell yeah, this is savage as fuck. Yeah. My last question is going to be, tell me about your documentary. Was it banned on Amazon? I heard some, it had millions yeah, of views. Well, What's look, the story uh, with that? Uh, I got a documentary out there and I really do urge people to, to watch it. It's called Enemies Within. Now it's political. It's basically so, showing the Marxist and Islamist infiltration of the government, particularly the Democratic Party, not exclusively though, and how they have, they have got to the stage of the communist base of control of the Democratic Party. And so it was on Amazon Prime, it was seen three million times, wow. and they took it down two weeks before the election and won't put it up again. You can still buy the hard copy DVD on Amazon Prime though. You still go there and get it. Look, it, 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 Exclusive to Amazon uh, the Look, DVD? I think it's on some other things like Zulu, you know, I think it's on some other uh, things as well. You can get it, Enemies Within, Trevor Loud, and you look at it, and we're now doing another movie, Enemies Within the Church, looking at the massive Marxist infiltration of even the evangelical churches now. I have a lot of pastor friends you'd like to meet. Yeah. Well, look, look, you know, they're all about Black Lives Matter. They're all about, you know, the old Christian values, the old Old Testament stuff, all of the old, you know, see, this is the other thing. Christianity used to be a very masculine religion. They used to sing songs like Onward Christian Soldiers. It's, it's patriarchal, right? Pa patriarchal. Now Christianity has been feminized. Yeah. It's all about these pastors with their skinny jeans and their wispy beards saying, we love you, doesn't matter what you do, come to church. Now we're not gonna talk about the Old Testament stuff or any of that, we just talk about the gospel of love. Well, that's, that is the feminine love, which is okay, but you've got to have the masculine love too. What are you doing coming to church when you're beating your wife? What are you doing coming to church when I saw you smoking dope the other day on the corner? What are you doing coming to church when you're behaving like a sinner all week long and you come to church and you think that's okay? Sort your life out, then come to church. That's masculine love. And that is love. That is love. And that's I love missing, it. missing from the churches these days. Yeah. That calling to account. You know, you know any young boy has been brought up by a mother who will love him like anything, but she can't provide that discipline and that fear of God that a father can say. They over-coddle over yeah, them. They over-coddle them, and they do. They turn them into little girls. They, they, they can't say, you wait till your father comes home, sonny. And your boy's, you know because they don't have that leverage anymore you know and that does not good for the boy and it's not good for the girl it's not good for the mum. every look there are women out there who do a great job of raising the kids don't get me wrong but i guarantee every one of those would acknowledge they would like to have a father in the house because that would make their job a lot better and they know it would be better for their kids and statistics back this up 100 percent. Look, look it's, it's common sense you know, it is common sense, and there's plenty of empirical evidence that kids do way better in a two-parent family when the man, especially when the man is very clearly clear, clear on his identity, is willing to be involved, willing to discipline the kids where necessary, and the mother and the father work in partnership where they have a clear role. You go into a family with a very weak father and a very domineering mother, that's not very good either. Yeah. You know, It's unhealthy. The, no, it's not healthy. And, and a woman likes to respect her husband. Yeah. She doesn't like to boss her husband around. You know? This is radical talk, Trevor. We can't have this, man. No, no, you got to go to the feminist gulag. See, 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 I wouldn't even, this wouldn't even be questioned 20 years ago. I'd be some wimpy mainstream guy 20 years ago. Now what I'm saying is you can even joke that it's sort of a bit radical. But it's not radical. It's just common sense. we got we got to stand for common sense. we got to acknowledge the values we've been brought up with, realize they are the truth, they are the good, and just give this feminist, anti-male, 
LGBTQ stuff, no respect whatsoever. It's Marxist, it's revolutionary, it's nothing to do with the rights of gay people, it's nothing to do with the rights of women. All it's designed to do is wreck the family so the revolution can unfold more easily. That, when you understand that, it makes a lot more sense what is happening. Trevor, I appreciate your time. Last always, question. Always, mate. Great, yes, sir. Mate. Where can people find you? Trevor Loudon yeah, tre Trevor Loudon. So it should be looking at the camera. Trevor Loudon dot com. Loudon is L O U D O N. But as I said before, if you try and Google it, Google won't bring it up. Surprise, surprise. So you got to put Trevor Loudon dot com in the search bar at the top of the page. Then you'll get it. All right. And they can get enemies within on Amazon. Look, you get it on. But go, you can get it through my website too. Okay. And you'll get it a lot quicker, and you're not paying Amazon yeah. to propaganda to, to basically wreck your life. So um, support local, support patriots. You go. You can get my movies, get my books on TrevorLoudon.com. Right. Thank you very much, Trevor. It's been an awesome interview. Yes, sir. Thank you. Pleasure, Anthony. See you next time, guys. 21 Studios. It's been Anthony Dream Johnson. Adios.